Hi, Seekers. Welcome to Mad No Madness Live. To my Madness Live. <laughs> Jeez. It's been one of those days. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, this is the hour with the pups. Get comfy, son. Get comfy. There you go. There you go. He has to talk to his baby. Well, hello, Anna Gags. Hi, Annie. Hi, 10 4, good buddy. Uh, no makeup. This is what old people look like. Eh? Right? Gray hair and all. Hi. You're avoiding the Sunday scaries? I don't blame you. I've avoided them all day. Then I got this notification. Uh, uh, you were mentioned. I go, what? Who the hell's this? And then I clicked on it and I go, yeah, no. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Not happening. <laughs> Hi, Catalicious, and Debra, and Teresa, and Brandy, and Vicky, and Stormy, and Ellen, and Rhonda, and Hippie Easta. That's as far up as I went. Hi, Eileen, Christy Claw, Holly G, SCL Sigma, Jamie, Marianne. Zoo Flute said I had a fabulous birthday weekend. Happy birthday to you. I haven't had such a good one in a long while. What? Weather helped. Oh, how nice. Been so cold. But we're going to be 60 tomorrow. Yay. You saw that stream? Yeah. Mm, no. <laughs> no. Pawns and pose. Hello. Thank you, 10 for Good buddy. I don't engage. No. Mm -mm. I'm sorry that that person's struggling in life, but no, I can't. I can't do it. I can't give that kind of energy anymore. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, Catalicious. I don't know, but I seem to attract them. And I don't know why. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I seen that. Chantal went out grocery shopping at the mall. I didn't know that was the thing. Can you imagine? You go to the mall, you walk around. Now you're carting around groceries. And then you gotta take those to the car. Like grocery that's crazy to me. We don't have that here. Like the grocery store may be across the street from the mall, but we don't have one in the mall. Hello, Snickers. Who thinks the mall shopping was pre-recorded? Perhaps. Actually, I do think it was pre-recorded. I think, yeah, we're about to see some pre-recorded. I don't know. Homophobic. I was called homophobic. God, reaching, reaching, reaching. Let me tell you one thing. That's one thing I'm not. That's possible. I don't even know. Yeah. I don't, you know what? It's, it, there are people that, you know, it's just sad. It's, it's sad. It's sad. And, and you know what? A lot of things happen in life. And some people just hate. They can easily hate. And um, you can't engage. You just can't. Because what other people think of you is none of your business anyway, right? Right. And um, social media can be, it can be, it can be very dark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I stay away from the dark unless I'm bringing it to light. And that's just one thing I, that's, that's one area that I don't care to engage in. Sorry. Mm -mm. Sorry about your luck, <laughs> but no thank you. And I really don't like to talk about, like, 
I do like to talk about um, my faith, but you do put yourself up there to be ridiculed or, but even God says, you know, don't make my name meaningless, which is taking the Lord's name in vain, by the way. That's the true meaning. Not saying JFC or goddamn. No, that's not taking his name in vain. It is making it meaningless. So if I shy away from people who don't want to hear about it, who, you know, then I am not doing a good service. But it is a personal thing with me. It is a very sacred, personal thing with me, not to be ridiculed. And that's the most uncomfortable part is when people use it as a weapon or a shield. And I don't want to do that, which is why I don't really like to talk about it. And I only recently started talking about it when Foodie was bringing it into the subject matter. But it is very personal, yes. And whether people question my faith or not, I really don't care. I don't really care. And other people's sins are not mine to forgive. Um, or whatever their path is, they need to seek God, not try to condemn another human being because they're triggered by um, their faith. I don't know. But you see it everywhere. It, it is a thing right now. And I'm trying to, like, not water down people's religions. You know what I'm saying? Because it is very personal. And there are people that will go out in the street and they will shake their fist and, and they will. I'm just not one of them people. I don't know why. Because I think it's kind of like a punch to the gut when you take something you feel so personal to you and you put it out for criticism. That could be it, but I don't know. Like my own personal journey. Like seriously. But when I see people just like, um, I don't know. I'm not even going to get into it, to be honest. Nope. That's engaging, and I'm not going to engage. Mm -mm. I missed you too, Angel of Glass. I really, really, really did. Thank you. Yeah. So, what did I do today? Hmm. <laughs> Jeez. Mr. No Madness. He sure is fun to hang out with. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> I swear, we take a car ride and we just like, we make each other laugh like the whole car ride. I, You know what? I don't even get it. But we've been doing this 20 years. Your hubby too? Yeah. I, You know, so when the sun comes out, I'm like, let's get out of the house, right? So we'll take a car ride. And, uh, we just hung out all day. He just went to bed. Yeah. So I just enjoyed it. That's how I wanted to spend my day. Um, I do have some things lined up for videos. We're going to do a flashback of what I believe is the reason Foodie's actually in Kuwait. We're going to do that. Uh, we're going to catch up with uh, Shani. Yeah, we're going to catch up with Shani. Yeah, I've seen that, Unicorn Blah. I'm like, why is your belly on the table while you're eating? Hmm. Maybe it just, you know, needs support. I don't know. I have no idea. Ah. I had, uh, we had, we went to a restaurant that makes, like, the most amazing pizza. So, believe it or not, we had pizza. And I put Parmesan on it. And, man, does Parmesan make you thirsty. Holy hell. You pried your husband off the farm today. That's great, Shireen. I want a farm so bad. A small one. Almost a petting zoo at this point. <laughs> I want... I just do. I have a dream. Are you guys working on your budget challenge envelope? Like, getting the money together? I've been saving money for three weeks now. Well, it'll be three weeks. Because we're going to start this in a week on the 1st, April Fool's Day. 
I'm going to still save some more money. I am so dead serious about this. Like, really serious. You love your farm? God, I wish. When, I see, I didn't even see, what? Wash your dishes. Who, who was, wait, what? And washed her dishes. Huh. I know Mr. Tiggs is laying down with his baby in his mouth. We need to save some, but all them damn bills come in at once. Yeah. Um, and you could do envelopes for that, which really would, like, might be the challenge you want to do instead of this, like, saving for your bills challenge. And that's where you tuck, you know how much you have to put away every pay? And then when the bills are due, you just pull them out of the envelope. I mean, what we're doing is changing our mind. I was talking to the lady at the bank today, or no, not today, Friday, about it. And she goes, oh, my God, yes, I do the budget challenge. I go, get out of here. So this is a big thing. She's like, yeah. She goes, I'm doing so good. And I go, so would you agree that this is changing your mind? Like, this is the whole purpose. She goes, absolutely. 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 You can't wait for the um, budget challenge. Yours is for a travel trailer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, does the right prayers for you, sweetheart. You got this, girl. You got this. Did they do an ultrasound? To rule out like a fatty tumor. We do that. We stick it in the savings and there it sits till the bills come in. There you go. And, you know, all we're saving is, um, it is money. It's frivolous money. Like money you don't even realize you spend on stupid shit. And I've been saving all the money I would normally spend on stupid shit. I'm probably going to shock myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You do that too? Okay. Catalyst just says, I'm still saving to build a small DIY pond for my mom. Look at you guys. You already got your goals figured out. Mine's a five-year goal. Technically, in order to reach my goal, I have to really be disciplined. And I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I told my husband, I said, any money that goes in there is to never be seen again until I pull it out, put it in a high yield savings and keep going. You know what I'm saying? You have to, cause you don't want that kind of cash sitting around your house. Um, but, or a five year CD or something. I try never to purchase junk anymore. I'm almost 64 and have enough stuff. Well, even like, do you ever get bored and or let's just say you're uh not at the grocery store let's say you're at a Myers, which is like it's got everything in there it's kind of like an upscale walmart anyway let's say you're in there and you're just in there to get your groceries you don't think i don't wander on you know what i'm saying you don't think i wander to other departments and end up with stuff in my cart that it doesn't like fill a void it's just like I don't know. It, it's just like, I don't know, something cute. I don't know. Like, something will attract me to it. And then I'm like, oh, my God. You know what I mean? Or even a new pair of shoes. Or I don't even know. Like, something make you feel like spring's coming. I don't know. What sort of things are you giving up? Yeah. Um, Amazon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, you think about selling your house. Yeah, well, even if I buy for others, you know, I'm listen. <laughs> so I'm reining all that in. I'm not gonna get I'm gonna get my mind frame going and get get things rolling and then I might, you know, like plan for things. Cause if you don't know, I threw out listen, I donated six garbage bags of clothes also known as 
my summer clothes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't even know what's going to fit this summer. But I'd rather lose weight than, you know, and buy new clothes than not. Well, hello, Catherine. You had snow again last night? I'm telling you what. Leone, yes, I will. I am going to on the side because on the side I have a vet veterinarian, but that money's been saved in case anything happens to my boys. I don't need a shocker, right? It's it's not a lot, but it's enough that could probably save a life. You know what I'm saying? Because that's very important. But Christmas, I am going to start tucking... Um, Money away for Christmas for both kids. You got 28 inches of snow yesterday. My God. Thank you, Patty. Snowing in northern Michigan. So much for spring. It's coming. We're going to be 60 tomorrow down here. It's coming. Northern Michigan takes a little longer for spring than it does down where I'm at. That's why I have trouble when I get into a place like Home Goods. Right? I know. I mean, I've had the same decor except for these curtains for four years. I'm sick of looking at it. I'm sure you are. I'm sick of looking at it. I, You know, this was my, I miss Florida, you know what I mean? Coastal stuff, you know what I'm saying? And now I'm like, I don't want to look at coastal stuff. I'm not doing it and just deal with it. You got a double ear infection. Oh, your Cocker Spaniel, and it was 500 bucks last month. Vet bills are ridiculous. And I'm not buying into that stupid uh, pet smart credit care because I like my vet. I ain't taking them to a pet smart. And, you know, it, it screws you over in the end. I've, I've talked to three different people that said it was a waste of money because little charges here and there and, then they would, you know, or you go somewhere and there isn't a pet smart and it's just bullshit. Not into it. Yeah. Some people love the pet insurance. Listen, in 11 years, think about this. 11 years, Miss, just Mr. Tiggs, okay? So 11 years of Mr. Tiggs, okay? I have not spent, and I get him... Uh, Brevecto every summer, both of them. Um, Jaxie has to take the liquid for him because he doesn't have teeth. And then we go through this whole fight of getting Mr. Tiggs to swallow a pill. It's a whole thing. I'm really considering the um, <laughs> liquid for Mr. Tiggs. Just, psh, we're done. But I go through a whole thing. Jax would, like, I would wrap it in turkey and Jax would chew around it and spit the pill out. It was a whole thing. So anyway, I have not even spent what I would have spent in the insurance money. So I've saved it on the side. So it's the same thing. What I would have paid, like $50 a month, or was it 60? Might have been 60. Just say, I've saved that every month for years. It's so crazy how they can eat around it and spit the pill out. I'm telling you, Jaxie, he was the Houdini. And then I've heard of people like holding their dog's mouth open and, and then tipping their head back and dropping it in the back of their mouth and then holding their muzzle shut. I can't do that. That would be traumatic to me. <laughs> so I play hot dog, turkey. By the time I'm done, they've had a full meal and a pill. I've even mushed it up because it's chewy. Mushed it up. Then it becomes a bigger mess. It's just everything you want. Whatever. I've done it all. I've made videos. Cheese, hot dog. I had the chat. Try this. Try peanut butter. Remember, you guys? Take some peanut butter, crumble up the pill in the peanut butter, and then spread that on a piece of turkey. Remember that, guys? Yeah. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I did all that. I did see that there is that pill popper thing. You put the pill in there, and then you put the syringe in the back of their throat and go, and then it shoots it to the back. 
Uh-huh. I think that's a good idea. When both my dogs got blowed, I had to give them both a liquid med and pills two times a day. It was a battle. Yeah. Now, when Jaxie got his teeth all pulled, except for these two, um, I had to give him, you know, antibiotics and something else. It was antibiotics. Oh, and pain. The pain med. Um, and it was liquid, so that was good. Pill packets, yep. You guys, I think I have to color my hair. I don't think I can take it much more. You do the syringe with your calves, okay. Yeah, the, the pill shooters make me nervous. Oh, you said that make sure it's all one piece and doesn't have a silicone tip. It popped out, my cat swallowed it. $600 ER visit. Was it so big you the cat couldn't poop it out? Your, cat, your dogs won't touch a pill pocket. Mine probably won't either. Yeah. It is one piece. I seen it. Nope. Jax eats his pellets for the first... Until his gums all healed, yeah, I had to... I put his dog food in my food processor and ground it up. And then I added warm water. And then it was mush. I fed it to him at first. And then he ate it. Then Tiggs wanted mush food. So now we're doing both dogs. Well, they eat more if you do that. So the vet said, once his gums are healed, he needs to go back to his dry dog food. I said, okay. And he's been fine. He, he bites it with his gums. It's crazy. And then he swallows it. I'm like, all right, you're right. They do... Like, adapt. So what else do you guys want to talk about? Hmm? Anyone? Ew. I, I remember cats get ear mites easy. I don't know why. But my dogs have never even had a dirty ear. Oh, thank God. Oh, you have a dog that likes to chew up stuff and eat everything? Chihuahuas don't. Mm-mm. They don't chew on shoes, nothing. Furniture, nothing. That's the one good thing about them. They don't get that chew up cords, nothing. Never. I know so many people, their shoes, their couch corners, uh, the, the, the corner molding in their house. I'm like, what? And their iPhone cords. It's scary, and he makes me worry ever since. Um, yeah. That's, you know, it's kind of like having a toddler at, or a baby at home getting into things, right? Ah. He's eating small rocks, my carpet, fleece blankets, my walls. Oh, my God. Hi, Vicky. That's crazy. I have a little min pin named Mamilo. He's a doll. I think they're so cute, too. Oh, Shanny, yeah. We'll cover, you know. Oh, my God. I can't with her. There's so many similarities. Like, I was listening to... Um, one where she was laying there in her mental health manor shirt. Welcome, Jason. Three dachshunds never chewed anything. Yeah, little dogs. I don't know what it is about them. Wow. Oh, they don't go outside? Yeah. It could be an outside thing that ear mites. I don't know. So anyway, yeah, I was listening to where she was laying there, right? She had her t-shirt tucked up under her girls and it said mental health matters. And she's laying there and she was like, 
on some good pain meds or something. And she, like, it was almost like she was reading out of the Foodie Beauty diary. The stuff she was saying was like, the stuff Foodie says all the time, I'm like, these two are two peas in a pod. But still, you know what I mean? What was Foodie Beauty saying about me? I haven't got to that part of the live stream. We we got tired of listening to her before we walked away. <laughs> you know what I mean? But listen, we try to make comedy out of it. We, we really do, because there's no hate. If I hated a stranger on the internet, I'd probably need to seek some mental help. Yeah, apparently she was saying something about me. She was trying to do your impression. Oh, she was trying to do deep voice. Oh, she imitated me. Thank you, foodie. Thank you. Love is in the air. Every time I look around. Was it bad? Maybe she'll work on her act. Hey, when listen, that is flattery. If Foodie Beauty don't mention you, it hurts. It hurts, people. She, I know she calls me no life madness. Do better. See, I don't call her out of her name. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, people call her Mary Ham. I don't do any of that. I don't. I'm going to sneeze. Imitation's flattery. Absolutely. I'm going to sneeze. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh. Oh, boy. We're getting new people in here. Foodie, did you send new people? Are you trying to get me to 7,000 subs? Thank you, Foodie. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for blessing me. I am going through it today. Because, like, it gets warm, then it gets cold, then it gets warm, then it gets cold. I may or may not be getting sick. I don't know. I, listen, this never happens to me, okay? But we did a live stream last night. I went to bed. I didn't toss and turn that much, right? Oh, thank you, Roots. I'm glad you're here. If you're a psychiatrist and someone comes to you with arrested brain development, what can you actually do to help them? Her brain is 14 years old. Amber's is eight. Like, we were, listen, we were being kind. We said, you know, foodie stuck at 16. Something happened to her. She got arrested development. Um, she could go, you know, go sort that stuff out instead of using, you know, the internet people as her therapist. But... Hey, actually, I'm going to do a video tomorrow to really show you how she uses her audience as a therapist instead of a real licensed therapist. You know, she just wants the in the moment. We love you. You don't do anything wrong. You're the best. She just wants that in the moment and then she's all good. Or, or she wants to, you know, FFG, right? And yabba. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, and then, the people agree with her. So there's some more, you know, there's some more enabling. Call it what you want. But uh, I always said, I don't know how bad they could be doing in life to actually trigger her during the holy month of Islam. That's not a friend. Those aren't friends. <laughs> but anyway, we just get a laugh, okay? She puts it out there. You know, you can, like, she plays with people's emotions, right? We we see this. I mean, come on now. I mean, you should be able to sit around, talk to people about cats, dogs, vets, uh, like, help each other. But she don't. She uses this platform uh, to sort her life out. And then when she screws up, because even the Beezers can't stop her from a good rage, right? When she's mad at the man in her life. It's usually the man in her life. She'll hit that live button. When she don't know where he at, he ain't answering the calls. We're going to cover that tomorrow. 
You're going to see something like, this is why she's in Kuwait. She had a whole Britney Spears meltdown when Nader, her abuser, picked another woman over her. Full on Britney Spears. Some of it's comical, some of it's worrisome. But she's she's doing fine now, right? She's met the love of her life. She's married. She's in another country far away from the nods, right? So what's the problem? Why are we still, you know, crying and angry? <laughs> yeah. The foodie, the slimming filters, yeah. They were going crazy in the shopping video. Oh, jeez. She pulled a Britney, all right. Mm -hmm. She went full on Britney. She's been defending herself since day two of Ramadan. She's going to have to redo the whole thing, right? Next year. <laughs> she failed last year. Okay, she failed this year. Next year, people. Next year. Oh, I love taking breaks from foodie. I couldn't even imagine that that would be my entire headspace on my channel. No. I live a life too. Sometimes y'all are like, you know, you know, dip, cut. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real. Like for real. You know, sometimes you're just like, I don't have the mental capacity to deal with your nonsense today. Yeah, wherever you go, foodie, there you are. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Did you see the side-by-side -side filter and unfiltered? Uh, n yeah, when she does a side profile, yeah. Um, I think it's because of the Spanx. You know, when you are just always wearing the... If she wore, like, a cream color, I don't feel like she would look like a scream mask. But she always, always picks black. I'm sorry... It doesn't hide anything. It just, it, it, your face looks like it's popping out of the, like a black hole in space. Peter Griffin, perhaps. Yeah, so I don't know. I think it's, it's, it's just, because I'm going to show you, like, you're going to be blown away because it's been two years since you've seen her um, be yourself, you know. And, and we're going to cover that tomorrow. We're going to cover that tomorrow morning for the morning people. You guys can watch it on the pre replay if you're not around in the morning. Um, I'm guessing, I don't know what time. I'll set it ahead. Yeah, well, you know, at least in the, nut, in the, in the cream color, she looked more soft. You know what I'm saying? soft, not so harsh. I thought so, but you know, what do I know? I'm not, you know, say yes to the dress or um, uh, what you shouldn't wear kind of person, but I don't know. Just something that spanks and tucking the hijab in so tight instead of letting it flow like the beautiful veil that it should be. I'm sorry, but I've been watching other hijabis and they don't cover their necks. They just don't. They let it, they'll bring it around and pin it and let this side just flow where it's got movement. Here's the other thing that confuses the hell out of me. She starts a sentence, takes three bites at once, then rolls her eyes. Um, that, it, literally you're watching somebody get a fix with food. It, it is disturbing, I know. <laughs> you guys, she looks like a boil. <laughs> Speaking of boils, how's that thing on her finger? Did we decide it's a wart or a boil? She showed us. We didn't... I, I could have lived a million years never seeing that. Like, for real. I could have lived a million more years without seeing... What's this? What's this? This big big thing and you're licking your fingers <gasps> that's where it came from 
You got bacteria or something going on. Maybe you got a bad tooth. I know, like, jewel tones would be beautiful. But she wears, like, grandma stuff, lumberjack shirts. Whatever happened to, like, a beautiful moo-moo? Ma'am, moo-moos. And what's the, the other name? Afghans? What are they called? Caf Caftans? What are they called? They're so beautiful. We've showed them before. She don't take our advice. Caftans. Thank you. They're gorgeous. That is disgusting, Catalicious. Have you caught that? Has anybody caught her eating the nose bugs? Anyone? Did she do that on a live stream once and got caught? Oh, God, I think so. I think I remember it. I think I remember it. Don't do it. I seen when she's out in public, she takes small bites. Except for when they were in that corral where the door shut and she was laid out like a seal and just picking up handfuls of rice and it was just going all down her. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's hard to find clothes of her weight, but if she can get a YouTube plaque delivered to somebody in Kuwait, you're telling me she can't order and have those said clothes delivered to same person? Yeah, I thought so. Uh-huh. Don't tell me she can't. We already know that Kuwait can get Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. They have caftans on Amazon. They make them in 8X or whatever you need. Can she get that growth from her herb lip? I don't know. Could be from licking that finger and touching whatever's going on. Yeah, I don't have pity for people who, you know, just keep. I mean, honestly, this is one thing she could control. She could control. Hi, Jagsy. Come on, Jagsy. Chihuahua alert. Did the baby in the house? Oh, look at him. Did you get a drink of water? Little old man. He likes to cuddle. She won't spend food on... She won't spend food money on new clothes. I know. Who goes to the mall? Nope. Can't find the, can't find a necklace to fit my throat. Uh, so let's go shopping for food. You know, right there is when you go, that's it. I'm done. You know, women, you know, after a long winter and you go to try on a bathing suit in the spring and you're like, that's it. I'm going on a liquid diet until June. <laughs> Another chihuahua alert. Hey, this a boy. Why'd you come over here? Because you got jealous. You're always jealous because you're a mama's boy. Yep, now I'm going to have an allergy attack, but I don't care. It's my baby. Yet you is. Like Amber with her choker extensions, right? <laughs> How about you ladies just don't wear a necklace? Thank you. Problem solved. Or go to the tractor supply. And get yourself chain. Make your own. You can you just pull it off the reel. Wrap it around. Go, yeah, that's a good length. And they go in there with the pliers. Undo the links. Ta-da. Hang a charm. Cowbell. Hang whatever. But going into the jewelry store, as soon as they see you, they're like, I don't even care if she's looking for a toe ring. We, we can't help you. We can't help you. Yeah, go to the tractor supply for your necklaces. Go over to Home Goods, get a napkin ring. Problem solved. I mean, you're choosing, and then you expect society to just bend a knee. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. Yeah, at least you can hear her coming to the kitchen, right, with the cowbell. Clunka, lunka, 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 lunka. <laughs> Can 
Can you imagine? <laughs> I tell you, when I was heavy, I should have put a cowbell on. <laughs> Remind myself. Keep your mooing ass out of the kitchen. Right? You know what they tell you? Take a picture of yourself. You know, in a bathing suit. Let's just say a bathing suit. Bikini. You can't do, uh-uh, no Chantal. You can't do a burkini, nor, nor can you do a wetsuit. A ba bikini top, bottoms. Have Salah take a picture, print that shit out, hang it on the fridge. I'm telling you, or and every cupboard. You'll get so nauseated, you'll turn around and walk right the fuck out. <laughs> I just, for real, like, I'm trying to help you, but don't listen. You keep doing you, boo. Right? And then pretty soon you're going to be on a freaking cargo ship home. You won't even be able to get on a plane. Speaking of which, you guys been reading all the stuff about the Boeings? Oh, Desiree, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hate when she brings up that stuff. She's just looking for people to comment on it so she can rage on you. Nope, not engaging. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's, there's some things you know not to say because it'll spark a rage. Even if they bait you. Mm -mm. I still have boundaries, some ethics, some morals. <laughs> Seriously. I like to do comedy. I'm not all about hate. She can be all about the hate. Then it'll be like a one-sided fight, won't it? For real. It's okay. People don't have to like you. You just flew on a Boeing? You were nervous? Yeah, that's my favorite. That Remember the saying? If it's not Boeing, I'm not going? That was me. I'm like, give me the big one. Give me the big Boeing. I love Boeings. I'm not going to say I'm nervous because how many Boeings take off? 737. How many of them take off a day? You know how they'll take something and put the fear in you? You know what I'm saying? And then everyone wants to talk about it and then pretty soon you're like, ah, right? Like maybe hiring um, contractors who may or may not you know, be specialized in, uh, I don't know, Boeings. Uh, anyway, I'm just saying, it. it's, because even, listen, all the airlines have Boeings, right? It's pretty bad when you're making spirit look good. Stop. And JetBlue. Stop. Those Airbuses. I like me a Boeing. I won't ever, I just flew, listen, I flew Spirit once. Once. No. <laughs> uh, like I said, all that was missing was the livestock. Johnny Fat Wee Hawkins flight. No way ever again. Yeah, I did once and it was my last. And it was only a one way. Thank God. You think Foodie is not getting reading glasses because they don't fit her head? Well, you know, there are some big men out there and they got glasses and they look good. I don't know. Maybe she thinks her eyes are her greatest feature. I just totally cracked myself up. Because <laughs> I was picturing the tight Spanx. And then she's got the glasses. Like, yeah, look like goggles on her. And she will look like an underwater diver. Like, for real. I think she knows this. That's why she refused. You can get contacts. Do you see that little thing? That... Pops your contacts in and out. Looks like a little suction cup, if you ask me. She will look like Scuba Steve. Yeah, she'll have the full-on 
mask and all, goggles. If she buys glasses, she won't be able to get her 20 family meals. Very true, because glasses are not cheap. Won't she float, though? Yeah. Scuba-fuba. Scuba-fupa. <laughs> Scuba-fupa Steve. Yeah. I can come up with names for you, too, sister. Yeah, the sunglass. There it is. Her cheeks push them up, and then they sit above her nose like this. <laughs> they do. They do. That's the problem. She can't get any to fit the nose and the cheeks. We've seen the sunglasses. Honestly, she looked like some sort of inbred insect, like, like a beetle met a bot fly. It was frightening. I don't understand why her eyes are different. I mean, I think everybody's are. Everybody has one eye that's like dippy and one eye that's like rounder. Haven't you noticed that with everybody? Snoopy on a doghouse, right? She's missing those ear flaps, right? All right, put a one in the chat if you think Booty should go home and get well. Now she got an she got her eyes checked when she was in Canada, but she ran to Kuwait so fast she never even got her glasses. Everybody says you need to go back to Canada. Foodie. Please let it go. Your channel's dying. Your love language is not that of newlyweds. Eek. No. You are more pissed off and unhappy than happy. That should tell you everything you need to know. And if it's your fault because you are, you go crazy in your own words, insane, you said, um, maybe you'd be better off for somebody when you finally take care of yourself first. Just saying. Miserable people make other people miserable. It's not somebody else making you miserable. It's yourself. You can, nobody will ever love you until you stop being miserable. Because you're just a burden. And then people get wore out. They, they get tired of it. Well, we know. Even when Salah says it's over, she won't leave. We're, we're going to see that tomorrow. Huge, huge burden. Nobody wants to listen to your woes. You've lost audience after audience after audience. Um, and you play around with their feelings. Um, you play around with uh, people in your life's feelings. I mean, you gotta, you, you got to believe that they're exhausted. I mean, we get exhausted and we just dip out and go live our lives. These people have to deal with you. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, change my number. I'd be, I'd, listen, I'd be over at my carrier as fast as I could. I'm going to need to change my number. Because even blocking her doesn't work. She'll hunt you down on social media, you know what I'm saying? She'll even do fake names and hit you up in Insta messages. A French community tried to support her, and then they go, oh, peace out. Well, it, and it, I just, you know, the same with Shani. Shani does the same stuff. She'd rather just be high all day than deal with life. And the best way to deal with life is she gained a shit ton of weight and then held Rev <clears throat> captive, mentally captive, and physically captive, and then she sits on, blames the internet, blames the haters, blames everybody else, and nobody even watches her anymore. So she's just talking into space at this point. 
I don't feel sorry for a grifting piece of shit. <laughs> well, foodie don't grift. She grifts people's emotions until she wears them out and then they just leave. Foodie telling us how a marriage should be. <laughs> you know what? We don't even have to argue it because those that know, know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People that know what a marriage is, they ain't even got to argue with her. They're just like, okay, cool. Hope that works out. I've been on here seven years. You know what I'm saying? I've never come on here and raged and lost my shit. <laughs> I mean, if you got a relationship where you go online and you lose your shit and you're crying and freaking out or like Shani and Rev screaming and yelling at each other, live streaming. That and that relationship's doomed. Like it's over. It's over. Cut your losses. Move along. Nothing to see here, folks. <laughs> you know Desiree? 34 years, exactly. She tries to drain everyone. Yes, Jason. Yeah, she can't drain me either. Mm-mm. Um, maybe if I was struggling with some of the things that she insults, no, I still, I still wouldn't. Because to me, it's like internet fodder. It's white noise. And sometimes, like, she gets ultra shitty, ultra vile, ultra insensitive because she's really in a bad mood or really hurting, and she wants to hurt you too. She'll go after moms. Um, she goes after pet lovers, just stuff like that. And sometimes she does cross the line. But then she loses even more subscribers. She still hasn't figured out that the subscribers literally are the reason she even makes a dime. The pumped up kicks, yeah. That one really took my breath away too. Yeah, that was ultra low ultra low she hated the united states she any and the thing is is probably most of her supporters are from the usa well were they were but you know people take their chances when they click the live button and they know they're going to be a hot mess and we're just here to watch it like tomorrow <laughs> i'm gonna show you why she's in kuwait mm-hmm Puzzle pieces. We're always fitting them together. She does love our Sonic, though, don't she? She loves our Sonic crushed ice, our chili dogs. Her favorite fast food comes from my country, you Cornwall clown. <laughs> Jason. She pissed you off. <laughs> yes, I walk away from the white noise. Unless I'm in the mood. Then if I'm in the mood, I'll talk about it. But I'm, I'll make you laugh because I'm not here to put you in a bad mood, make you upset, make you angry. That is me taking advantage of a platform. Um, if, I, if I'm ever angry, which I'm never angry, um, I handle myself and handle life with a cool head and a lot of prayer. And I'm at peace. But when people come on and they want to get you angry or insult you or your religion or your culture, or that is your typical social media brats. That means they really are hurting inside and they want you to hurt too. And we don't like people like that. We just like to watch them. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Unhinged, we'll call it. I like unhinged. Do you guys ever watch like shit like that on uh, the TV on your YouTube? I do. I watch the Karens losing their shit, laugh my ass off. I'm like, you're going to be all right. I do when the Karens just come across your yard. They just come right into your yard. Wagging their finger at you. You're like, I don't even know who put you on a throne or a pedestal, 
But you done lost your mind showing up over here at my house, wagging your finger. Mm -hmm. I remember I had this old neighbor and uh, she didn't like, she, I probably told the story before, but she built a enclosed garden, big structure. Like, just that fencing around it, tall structure, right? Animals can't get in her garden, right? Cut down trees. Never even looked at the property lines. And then, I don't remember. Oh, oh, I had this really sappy evergreen tree, right? And I was like, I was like, you know, I really, really should talk to somebody about cutting this thing down. Everything would just be covered in that nasty pine sap. I hate that shit. Anyway, if you even mowed past it, right, it'd be in your hair. It was a whole thing. And it, and it was not even attractive. It was not attractive. It wasn't the evergreens, you know, where the um, they have the soft, like it does, the like a Christmas tree and it's all soft. No, it was the pointy one. Not only that was stab you. Okay, so I was commenting to my, my other neighbor was standing out in the yard with me, and I said, I really, I wonder how much it costs to cut one of these down. This one just making my life a living hell. The, the bitch next door, right, that built the big whatever, her, her own secret garden, right? She is like, you know, before you cut that down, you should probably you know, check the the property lines. I go, funny you should say that. Now you're giving me advice, right? After you cut down trees on my yard and your greenhouse is partly on my uh, property. And I said, well, here's a funny thing. If I sell this house, you're going to have to take down your garden. You know, that structure you built where you cut my trees down. Never even got a property line. I mean, she went over the easement. She even went over the easement. You know, they do an easement for the utilities, right? They have they have full right, 12-inch easement. She went over that, too. Took two trees down on my property. And I never said a word. You know, because, you know, the only thing that makes good neighbors is good fences. So anyway, I was like, not even a problem. Until that day. And then I'm like, well, that's funny you should say that. <laughs> you know what she did? Lost her shit. Lost her shit. Because I technically had a survey done and still had a copy of my property line. Not only that, the you know how there's a stake with a little red, like a little red flag thing on it? If you look straight down through her garden, on the other side, you could see my stake. <laughs> like she was over. And then my stake. I said, you know, uh, you can't fix stupid. You can only duct tape it. So I didn't say anything till that moment. And then she's like, I did not go on your property line. I go, oh, hold on a second. I went and got that print, that like art, architecture print from a surveyor, the surveyor report. And I held it up and I go, look down, you know, cause I had it like all lined up. And there was her greenhouse over on my property. You know what she did? Lost her shit because I was right. So she went and took a sledgehammer and destroyed her whole garden structure. And me and my other neighbor, cause we're both just like, huh, look at this shit. I go, man, too bad my camera battery's dead. I'd be clicking pictures of this shit. This is funny. And her and I were just dying laughing. Like, look at her losing her shit. <laughs> you, let me get this straight. You cut down trees on my property, built yourself a garden over on my property. Technically, those tomatoes are mine. But I didn't say anything. And then I'm talking about cutting down an evergreen tree on my property, which, you know, was like kind of like you know, it was kind of like a barrier between, you know, so you really wouldn't have to see each other. And I wanted to take it down and put something else there, you know, something 
more majestic, I suppose. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, she didn't want me to cut that tree down on my own property. And that's why she said that. I was like, funny. You know what I'm saying? She destroyed it with a sledgehammer right in front of us. That was funny. Look at this. Talk about unhinged. I mean, that was a, I'm chill. <laughs> I'm chill till I'm not chill. But I was even chill standing there. I loved it when I pulled that out and went. I go, come over here. I'm holding this right where it's all drawn out. You see your your garden? <laughs> yeah. And that garden was there for like a year and a half or something. <laughs> People are crazy, man. It's like they want to like, they want to like free speech your ass. But then if you return the favor, <gasps> oh, you're like, you got to be kidding. Yeah, now she grows hate in her garden. No, actually, her husband divorced her. Her husband divorced her. Probably because she was a... Whoa. She couldn't stand sharing, right? Yeah, that's funny shit. But I do like to sit back and watch. I like to watch the Karens. There's this one guy, the real... What's his name? Have you seen him on the YouTube shorts where he, people screwing up at their jobs and he's standing there with the hard hat on and he's going, and then he shows a clip of stupid people at work. Then he goes, do you guys watch that guy? I freaking love him. I giggle at all of them. Just stupid shit people do at work. That's like against OSHA. He's standing there like he's an OSHA inspector. I freaking love it. What is the name of him? The real... The Cartnark? No, I never heard of it. He's got the glass glasses and a hard hat, and then he's got the safety vest on. <laughs> he's like the safety inspector. Oh, my God. Catalicious, you will laugh for hours. I love funny shit. I really, oh, I can find it right here. Hold on. I'll find him. I'll show you one. It's gold. Yeah, he just makes faces. I'll show you. Hold on, I'm getting that YouTube up on the air. Here we go. What's his name? Real Adam Rose. Okay, I'm gonna show you. This stuff's great. I'll just hold it up. You can, I'll, I'll show one of his shorts. Lights, camera, action. Okay, watch. <laughs> real Adam Rose. Is that what I said? <laughs> Look at my hair. The re real Adam Rose. I love all his shorts. They're so funny. Oh, come on. I got to turn it back down. I know. There's so many, too. I, lo I love watching YouTube shorts. It's like it's just like TikTok, but without, without all the nonsense. And you get to see new channels that you didn't even know existed. And that's why I'm, I'm going to start bumping up my shorts. I'm going to start adding more shorts. 
I was thinking of doing like funny stuff on my shorts. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Because, see, I did that on TikTok. And um, I had a good time doing that. But it's a lot of work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Who's ho Anyone get my Hoyt Axton ref? No. Never heard of Hoyt Axton. Oh, my God. It's from 1970s safety films. Oh, my God. Now I know what you're talking about. That's awesome. I know. I got to work on another parody. I was kind of thinking of doing a parody of Chantal having to live in a van. Max, the van, if she went back to Canada. <laughs> With Living in a van with Pete. Down by the river. Right. No, out in the woods. Pete, crapping in a bucket. No, I better not add that. Look at you guys. You just want me to mess around. Should be living out there. Right. And then we have to have all the smoke. You open the door and the smoke just rolls out. I know, that was the other thing. I'm not going to like, like, I'm not going to make fun of her weight. Because I don't, I just don't do that. I'm going to make fun of her inability to mature. Because that's what entertains me. Not like making fun of her being fat. That doesn't entertain me. It's, it's the, it's just how life is so difficult for her. Right? <laughs> That's why I like to make parodies of. Not, like, dress up like her. I'm not gonna, like, insult the hijabi or the hijab or the abaya. None of that stuff. It's the, the mental Olympics that make me laugh. There are a lot of weird people that pretend like they live in their car. And you go look at their channel and you're like, you're getting 235,000 views a, a video? Trust me when I say, either you are so stupid you didn't monetize your channel, or you're lying because there's no way you're making those kind of views, you're living in your car anymore. Unless, you know, but even if you're traveling, you would have bought a Sprinter van by now. I know, right? Yeah, I'm not going to buy a, a female and a male blow-up doll to be, you know, like, this is, you know, foodie and beauties, foodie and Pete's relationships. Oh, they barely broke a thousand views. Yeah, people are getting tired of that because there are people that profess to living in their cars. They've been doing it for five years now and their sub count is up. Their, their views are getting a... They're getting sick amount of views. There's no way. If Chantel can live a whole lifestyle, pay for a car, an apartment, cell phone bills, back taxes, plane tickets, making doing eleven thousand views, then you can't tell me these people making doing two hundred and thirty thousand views a video are living in their car. No, that's called the set. That's their set. <laughs> That thing parked out in the back, right? Well, in the backyard of their big ass house. The Ralphies, I've never heard of them. Did you see they released? <gasps> Remember the Eight Passengers YouTube channel? Ruby Frank, abusive bitch, crazy bitch. Uh, and Jody. Abusing those kids. You see they just released the police body cams. Oh, yeah. I watched that shit today. Mm-mm-mm. That little boy on the ring camera going to the neighbors two doors down. And he had duct tape on his ankles. He was in his socks. Asking that man to call the police so he could save him and his sister. Do you see they shaved the sister's hair off? The cop thought she was a boy. 
I hope they enjoy their time in prison. For real. I would hate to see all that beautiful blonde hair shaved off your head, Ruby. I told you when it comes to kids, fuck you. Mm-hmm. That made me cry, too. And that, that el elderly gentleman that he said, sit right here on the porch. Do you... Then he went and got him water and snacks, waiting for the police. But he was so smart because they could have accused him of being the person. He was so smart to set that little boy out on the porch right in front of the ring camera. That was so smart. Kids and animals, man. Sorry. Scream and yell at me all you want. It is not my sin to forgive. So, go work on that shit with God, okay? Mm-mm. Don't mess with kids or animals. You're evil. Well, hello, life of an angel ma. I don't even talk to people like that. Uh-uh. So, I'm sure when the other mothers in prison find out because you know she was a youtube celebrity making bank money and and she's like oh i was brainwashed by jody no you weren't no you weren't bitch because people watched your channel remember when the little girl broke the nail polish on the bathroom floor the the fear in that little girl's eyes everybody knew everybody knew oh yeah jody was possessed people yeah, she's she's possessed. Even even Kevin, the cuck. Uh, yeah, like when she moved in, shit got real weird. Yeah, because they were two lesbians. That's why it got weird, Kevin. That's why it got weird. That's why you weren't allowed upstairs. I mean, I know you're an engineer and all, but woo, street smarts. You do not have any. You do not have any street smarts. Yeah. Well, let's look on the bright side. Even if he got the kids who he hadn't seen in a year, none of his kids, one year, one year. So he didn't fight for anything. He didn't fight for his kids. He didn't fight for shit. So anyway, even if he has custody of those two little ones, let's just be happy that by the time she gets out of prison, they'll be grown. She won't be able to hurt them anymore. Yes, he was the biological father of all the kids. Yep. So anyway, um, when he was on the phone with her, he was like, everything she, he's, ups, he's in love with her, no matter what she did to him. He, he's a rev. And, and Ruby is a shanty. The end. Rev, if Rev beat up Shanny's autistic son, she should have left him. If Shani beat up her autistic son and Rev took the rap for it, he should have left her. See, this is some sick shit. He never even asked about the kids. And then they released the, um, you know, the jail calls between her and Kevin. I said, he just, he needs a, I don't know. I think the dad has them. Because she told Kevin where the kids were and to go to the hospital and get their kids. He had to tell her this is being recorded. Yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. Were you playing your game? No. You can't sleep? Right. Well, it's early. Early? It's 10.30. Oh, the kids are with Sherry? Are you for real? Yeah, I know. She, and then, remember the teenage boy? 
took his room away from him and he had to sleep in a beanbag chair for seven months for pulling a funny prank on his little brother. I don't think the other kids can stand her. The dad doesn't have the kids. All right. I just got from the jail call where she said, you know, go get our kids. They're going to be in the hospital for three days. Or he was telling them they were going to be in the hospital for three days. Sherry has the kids. Okay. Is that her sister that was calling CPS and CPS wasn't doing anything? Hubby wants you to come to bed. Does he? Is that how... We don't have a relationship like that. Ain't no man telling me what time to go to bed. Uh-uh. Never. <laughs> the sisters, bro, and the parents bother me too. They all do. She had like this spell over all of them. Oh, Sherry is the oldest child? The one that spoke out against her mother? Oh, she'll protect those kids, but she's too young. She's too young to be taking on that burden. Wasn't she going to college and stuff? Hubby wants us to go to bed. <laughs> no, he's in the kitchen wearing out the linoleum. He can't sleep. He always have trouble sleeping on a Sunday night. She had to raise them when she lived there. True. True, but then she got away. God, they're psycho. Those bitches are psycho. When I heard all things, all the things that nine and twelve year old had to do, I mean, honest to God, did you hear that Jody was looking for property in Arizona so it would they would have better space to teach the kids? Jody is a demon, like straight up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, can you imagine if they would have got them out in the Arizona desert? Those kids would have died. What? Sebastian's parent, you mean the stepdad and the mom, they were seen leaving their home with a packed camper. <laughs> Why? Did you hear the stepdad talk? Did you know Sebastian's real dad, Seth, is a cop? Don't you think they're they're close to finding him? I think they're close to finding him. I seen JLR was covering that in Hendersonville, Tennessee, live stream. And I think they're close to finding wherever they dumped him. The real dad is a cop. Correction officer. Same thing. They said he worked in a police department. They even they even said the police department. He's been out there every day looking for them. The, that real dad's the only one out there looking for him every day. He was supposed to get full custody in September. No, that was Riley Strain you're thinking of. They found in Cumberland Lake. I think there's a clear line in the sand being drawn by social media, and we all know where we stand, I believe. I'll tell you one thing. I stand for the truth. I don't stand for words to label people um, and to slander people with. You, you produce the truth or shut the hell up. That's my thing. You're just running around, you can, you know, now this is the day and age where you could just use words um, to make people hate other people and join your little club. Where everybody get a badge. Everyone gets a sticker, right? I don't play like that. I grew up, and you're, you know what I mean? It, it's the truth if you can prove it. If you can't prove it, then shut the hell up. Good and evil is very prominent. Absolutely. Pick a side. 
And then everybody's like making the like all the prophecy things about the red heifer. The, this will be the tenth red heifer that's going to be sacrificed, and it's going to be sacrificed to build the temple. And I'm like, you do understand there's like five more red heifers. And this will be the tenth one that's been sacrificed. It's kind of like, um, they, they have no spots. They're supposed to be like pure. And you sacrifice them when you're, to, like in order to build the temple or it will not be clean kind of thing. I know, poor heifers. I thought, I once thought, uh, oh, I don't talk politics on my channel. People that never gave a shit about politics their entire freaking life have now found out that it creates great fights on social media. I'm like, they're all in it together. The end, the end, all of them. All of them are in the same club and they all get the same pay and kickbacks. The end. <laughs> I know, but I still don't talk about politics on my channel because that is a lose-lose. It's a lose-lose. It's like the hot thing to be for or against good versus evil. Yeah, I don't do it. The journals that they release with all the... Oh, yeah, her journals. She wrote all the abuse, which is why Ruby, um, because she kept a journal, that's why she pled guilty. It wasn't to not put her kids through any more hell. God, she wouldn't give a shit. It's because she documented it all. And God bless that little boy. Said, you know what? Even if I die trying, I'm getting the fuck out of this house. That was the third time he escaped. The one time was when they made him sleep outside. And Jody woke up, in, or uh, Ruby woke up in the middle of the night and seen he wasn't outside her window sleeping like he's supposed to be out, like a dog. So she got in the car looking for him. He got smarter the second, or the third time, did he not? That kid, he... I'm going to tell you what, he's going to be something someday because even his own mother, he fought and he won the will to live. That kid's got more will than any kid his age I've ever seen. He is a hero. He saved his little sister. Tenacity that one had. I hope she rots. I hope the prison board says, you know what, bitch? I think you need to serve all 60 years. Four counts, four to 15 years apiece. 60 max. I think you just, you know what? Go run a prison. I know the police thought little sister was a boy because they shaved, they shaved her head. Punishment. Shave your, hope they shave your head in prison. Hope everybody gets the, the scoop so you can see what it felt like. You, you didn't allow them to have food, water. You made your son sleep in a beanbag chair when he had to go to school and everything. He couldn't be comfortable. You took away comfort. I hope they take your comfort. Yeah. Denying your children water. What if they would have died? Yeah, it's easy to happen to children. They were emaciated and dehydrated. That's when your organs start shutting down. I can't stand either one of them. And Jody, big fat fucking wildebeest. Okay, don't get me started. When it comes to kids, I feel no empathy for grown-ups that don't protect children. The end. That's it. Or animals. <laughs> then the dad was more worried about his wife than the kids. That's my point. She is in Gen Pop. Yay. Well, she could have pled insanity and not 
she would have went to a mental hospital and not a trial. She'd go into prison. And you think those women in there give a fuck about your mentals? No. Half of them are crazy anyway. So have fun with that, Ruby. Let's see what a badass you are in prison. I know. the. F this is how it was. They took off the duct tape. There was saran wrap. Then there was cayenne, pepper, and honey. Cayenne, pepper, and honey over open wounds. And the one paramedic wanted to cry when she seen what was under that duct tape. That little boy. Neither one of them women shed a tear for those children's pain, suffering. Can you imagine looking into your child's eyes and they're so frightened of you. They've lost every sense of self. What a job as a parent. You are evil. Evil. Only evil can do that. Hi, Fatima. You just watched a 2020 documentary on them? Yeah, I seen that. It's on Hulu. I said, I don't even know if I can take any more. I've seen enough. I'd like to see the hidden cameras of her in prison. I'd love to see that. Why the honey with the cayenne pepper? I don't know. That was um, a, um, a mixture. Does the, would the cayenne pepper burn? I mean, I know the honey would heal, right? He's, you know what she said? It was his fault he had those wounds. Because when she tied him up, he was wiggling too much. Caused those wounds. The honey makes the pepper stick. Well, they... the. It's weird because where they're at, uh, the, ju the judge doesn't sentence them. The corrections board. So when they go to prison, the correction board reads everything and decides how long they should be in prison. It's probably a good idea because the correction board has more experience with levels of criminality and like st state of mind, right? In order to in order to commit certain crimes, you have to have a certain state of mind, and I believe like yes, the that's who should be doing the sentencing. Not a judge that goes home, kisses his wife and kids every night. It's somebody who works in the prison and sees the mentality of these women who can do that to their own children, right? So they got a better understanding of rehabilitate, rehabilitation time or punishment. I think it's brilliant. Levels of defiance, right. They're better qualified. I think it's brilliant. He said they cannot be rehabbed. No, and neither can uh, ex-offenders. They can't either. They're not going to get a light sentence, no. Not, not when they see the photos, the pictures. Wow. Well, there's a lot of people that uh, you say they need to want want it. Uh, there's a lot of people that go through the rehab and they just go through the motions because they know exactly what you want to hear and what you want them to say because they're true psycho psychopaths. Um, and then they'll just get out and continue with the crimes again until they're caught again. Like, they feel nothing about it. They don't feel fear. They don't feel fear. They don't feel empathy. It's a game. It's a mental game. And it's always a winner and a loser with these people. Not love, not true bond. They don't feel any of that. None of it. And that's mostly the people in prison. You want people that can take another life, harm a child. Um, no, they act in the moment. It's not like this long commitment, a bond you build, earn respect. 
No, to them, everything's right now. Whatever I feel like doing, I'm doing. No fear of consequence. Most of them think they'll just run the prison when they get there. Just another chapter in life. The rest of us are like, oh, hell no. I'm good. I couldn't imagine losing my freedoms. They don't think like that. And that's why the parole board or the parole boards know these people because they deal with them for years. I know. I'm getting ready to sign off. I think that is what she was doing when she stood in court. She isn't remorseful. Of course not. She just wanted a lighter sentence, I suppose. Or blame somebody else, which she said she was brainwashed. Same thing with Lori Daybell, Valo Daybell, right? She got her prison sentence. Now here comes no, no teeth looking Chad. Did, did you ever see Lori Daybell's ex-husband? And then Chad, that's Chad. Chad looks like, you know, when somebody just takes their teeth out and you know their teeth are out. Chad looks like that with his teeth. Can you imagine if, his, if he didn't have teeth, his lips would be down inside his throat for real. Her ex was very handsome. Charles was such a good man. He even went to the police and said, she's lost her mind. I think she's going to kill me. She keeps saying, I'm not my name. She's telling me that I am uh, the, a dark light. And he goes, a zombie. She's going to kill me. And the cops are like, oh, you're so silly. And that she did. The whole thing. She is exactly where she needs to be. She is a menace to the society. Menace to society. And Chad, writing all those books, just trying to get a piece of ass. That's all he wanted. He wanted Lori. You almost sat on Lori's jury in Arizona. <gasps> you got summoned three weeks apart. And they rejected you both? Why? why they reject you? It don't even matter. You don't even have to say a word. They'll just look at you and go, mm, that's not what we're looking for. I want to know how Lori Vallow is able to keep highlighting her hair blonde in prison. Sun in? I don't know. Is it in the commissary? I'm not peroxide. They're allowed to get peroxide, right, from the commissary? Going out in the sun, just, just putting it in her hair, I suppose. They didn't like our answers to the death penalty. Girl, you should have reined it in for that trial. Reign it in. If they say, what do you feel about the death penalty? I'll say, depends. You know what I mean? <laughs> it depends. What are we talking here? Jeffrey Dahmer? What are we talking? You tried? Damn it. Yeah, it's probably peroxide. Yeah. Those girls, man, they can make listen. They can make they make eyeshadow out of Kool-Aid up in there. Those women know what they're doing. They tricked us, told us it was something else. Of course they tricked you. They're playing mind games. Yes, peroxide can make your hair orange. Definitely, like sun in. You just have to keep putting it on. Going out in the sun, putting it on, going out in the sun. Over and over and over. But I'm pretty sure you're going to... No, last time I seen Lori Daybell, uh, her hair was not blonde. Hold on. It was getting gray. Let me get it. Let me pull up a picture. They keep showing old older pictures of her. Yeah, that shit's growing out. She ain't she ain't blind no more, ladies. She gray. That blind's growing right the hell out. 
Yeah, they're just showing you old pictures when she was, you know, blonde, blonde. Yeah, she don't look like that no more. Psycho. We'll look at a prison photo. Yeah, she definitely make an eyeshadow out of Kool-Aid now. <laughs> oh dang you, stop with that. Look look at look at the eyeshadow. <laughs> she making look at her eyebrows. You know one of the girls in there trying to help her out with the eyebrows. Oof. She trying to make makeup out of commissary. It could be even a ramen noodle markers. Ramen noodle packet. You know what I'm saying? Look at the eyeshadow. Come on now. Look at the eyebrows. You know what I mean? She got herself a, a prison girlfriend already. Mmm. Sad. Now you look like a zombie, Lori. That looks like some serious threading. Spicy chicken mascara. <laughs> Spicy chicken eyeshadow. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. I think I would give up makeup too, but she's too vain. She probably thinks this prison's about her, don't she? She's so vain. After what she did to her own kids. Screw you, Lori. Her teenage daughter. And her autistic son. She couldn't just give them to the grandparents. Sick bitch. They lose their life. I don't know what that is. Oh, the parody. Okay, you're like the Patty. The parody A. Froman. Uh, A. Froman, what's that? They were her props. <laughs> I'm telling you what. She's always used her looks to fool people, yeah? She is sick. She smiles at every camera shot. My God, you're getting arrested and your face is in the dirt. And you still turn around <laughs> for a photo op. That chick's nuts. Did you see her, like, her, um, her mug shot? She, I, I thought it was a joke. Oh, because I got high song? Yeah, I like that one. That's funny. I was going to go to class, but then I got high. <laughs> Hugs. Hi, Mr. Queen. St. George, Utah got slammed with a storm. It ain't, it's not going to hit us. I already looked it up. I already looked it up. Thank God we're in the clear. Thank God. We're going to get some rain. But that's it. He said he's going to throw anyway all my snacks, but you know that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, guys, I'm calling it a night. They did a parody with lyrics about foodie. Awesome. I'm going to have to check it out. We may add it to the show tomorrow. You had a three-minute thunderstorm in Los Angeles. I heard you guys. I heard you guys had a tornado. Was that like a week, a week or so ago? You guys never seen the sky open up before in California. Y'all just deal with the earthquakes, you know. And here, I'm gonna tell you, spring. Uh, all right, you guys have a good night too. I love y'all, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I'll show you why foodies in Kuwait. Boom. The Britney Spears moment. All right, guys. Bye. Love y'all. Good night. Sleep.